So it's been about a year since I first got the ASUS ProArt StudioBook Pro 16 OLED in my studio for review. And I must say, it's definitely been one of my favorite laptops, specifically for creators with the features and functionality that it offers. In this video, we're gonna talk about some things that I love, some things that I don't like too much, and then we're gonna talk through the different models that are currently available to help you pick the right one for your needs. So we'll be looking at some benchmarks near the end of the video. Now, first and foremost, something that I don't like about this laptop, you've heard me complain about it before, we'll just reiterate it for those of you that are not aware, this trackpad is not clickable. And this gets a little annoying when you wanna like click and drag something, like I wanna click and drag this. But if, you know, my finger is over here, okay, let's say I wanna click and drag it from over here, and then I wanna click and drag it, I can't. I have to make sure I get the, you know, click, and then I can and drag it. And so it just is kind of like an awkward position, and it can be kind of uncomfortable, especially as a creator when you're on the go and you're using the trackpad a lot to work, it just is not my favorite functionality. There's a laptop called the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme, and it has the click buttons up here, uh, from here to up here, and the trackpad is also clickable. And I wish Asus would do that. Now these are great buttons if you're in 3D modeling or you know a program where you have to like look around an object of some sorts, maybe even architecture software. So those buttons are really great, but I wish the trackpad was clickable for other daily uses. Now recently Asus announced the 2023 version of the Asus ProArt StudioBook Pro 16 OLED, and it comes with the full size trackpad and the trackpad seems to be clickable. So if that is important to you, as it is me, I would consider waiting for the next generation, the 2023 model. If it isn't important and you don't mind the buttons on the trackpad, then this would be a fantastic model for you to pick up. Now, the next thing I don't love is that this thing underperforms substantially in SolidWorks when using a GeForce RTX GPU. That's a gaming GPU. However, as you can see in the benchmark test, if you're looking at Autodesk 3ds Max, Autodesk Maya, PTC Creo, and specifically SolidWorks, you can see that the A5000 GPU performs very well in SolidWorks. And the GeForce GPUs perform well in Autodesk 3ds Max, Autodesk Maya, and PTC Creo. But if you're going to be using SolidWorks, make sure you get the laptop with the workstation GPU, either an A3000 or an A5000. It's gonna be substantially more expensive, but you're gonna get the performance you are looking for. Now do know that the latest models with the A3000 or A5000 no longer come with the workstation CPU you from Intel, you can only get the i7-12700H with that GPU. But if you get last year's model, you can get the workstation CPU, which is what we will have in the performance benchmarks later in the video. Now, the third thing I don't love about this laptop is it's not as bright as I expected. It's about 400 nits at max brightness. And for an OLED display, I would love to see around the 550 to 600 range. Um, and so that is a little bit on the annoying side. I do wish it was brighter. However, the color accuracy is fantastic. You can see the color accuracy and color gamut range results coming up on the screen. And it's a very vivid, color intensive screen that is very color accurate. And so it's beautiful to look at. It's just if you're in the sunlight, maybe working outside, it's not as bright as I would hoped it would be. Now the benefit of it being not so bright, it does get good battery life being a 16 inch laptop and having solid performance. In the Passmark productivity benchmark, the Xeon processor gets about seven hours of battery life. The i7-12700H gets about eight hours of battery life, and the Ryzen 9 5900HX model from last year gets about nine hours of battery life. So if you're looking for battery life, I would choose the Ryzen model from last year. If you're looking for the best performance, I would probably lean towards the Intel i7-12700H model from this year, but we'll get into the performance benchmarks in just a minute. Now, another thing that I absolutely love about this laptop is the dial. This is no gimmick, okay? I've done full videos on this, talking about the productivity and uh, doing a full review. So if you wanna see those videos, I'll link up a playlist at the end that includes my full review of the dial. You can set up your brush sizes, you can change brushes, you can scroll through the timeline. There's so much you can do with this dial. It is truly a productivity booster. It's not just a gimmick. So I really like the dial. Now, the next thing is that it's thin and light for a 16 inch powerful laptop. I mean, the amount of performance they pack into this chassis is fantastic. Now it's not the lightest laptop you'll ever own, but it's an RTX 3080 Ti in this model and an i7-12700H with two upgradable RAM sticks and two M.2 slots that are swappable. Now, before we get into the performance benchmarks, if you're curious about the exact pricing of all the models available currently on the market and all the different spec outs that are available, I wanna put links in the description below so you can check out the live pricing. Now, if you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. I'm freaking stoked. 
about the Patreon that we're about to launch. Absolutely. We're launching a freaking Patreon and you should join because it's going to be awesome. We're going to have never before seen content on the channel. Patreon, not channel, channels YouTube. So why is this content not being posted to YouTube? Well, the answer is really simple. I know that there is a tight group of loyal followers that follow my content and I want to reward and be a part of the tight, loyal community that we have been building here as we've been reaching 85,000 subscribers. And I want to go deeper with you guys. I want to do live Q and A's. I want to get face to face with you and chat in a live video call with my most faithful subscribers. I want to repurpose that content and put it on my channel so you can then be featured in my channel with me. I want to do exclusive giveaways that I can't just launch to the masses of communities. There's sometimes I get to keep laptops, but I don't need them. And so it's a place for me to basically just give back to my most loyal community followers. Now let's go ahead and get into the performance benchmarks. And this is where I hope to help you pick the right model for your needs. As discussed earlier, the overall best model for 3D modeling would be the i7-12700H and RTX 3080 Ti. Uh, that 3080 Ti is very powerful and it gives you great performance. As you can see, the Ryzen 9 5900HX with the RTX 3070 does good, but it definitely falls behind in most of the tests. However, as we move forward into SolidWorks, if you're gonna be a big SolidWorks user, I'd recommend getting the workstation GPU, either the A3000 or the A5000. Now, moving on into the Photoshop benchmark, you can see that the best contender would definitely be the i7-12700H. And honestly, you could get the RTX 3070 Ti version or the RTX 3080 Ti version and get great performance. If you go ahead and get the i7-12700H and the RTX 3060, I'd recommend trying to find that laptop with 32 gigs of RAM because that'll put you at around the thousands to 1100s on the Photoshop benchmark, which is plenty of performance. Photoshop really likes RAM, so you could actually get a lower GPU SKU if you're a mainly a Photoshop user, you know, graphic designer, digital artist, or photographer, and you could get as good a performance as maybe this, you know, RTX 3080 Ti version, but with a better budget standpoint. I think right now on bestbuy.com, you can get the i7-12700H version with the RTX 3060 for around $2,000, which is a substantial savings, between the 3070 Ti version and the 3080 Ti version. Now, moving on into After Effects, you can see that once again, the i7-12700H with the RTX 3080 Ti takes the crown. I think this has a lot to do with that GPU. After Effects really enjoys a powerful GPU for all the graphics processing. And also, if you were gonna go ahead and upgrade this to 32 gigs of RAM, it would perform even better. But I think a nice happy medium would probably be the i7-12700H with the RTX 3070 Ti and 32 gigs of RAM if you wanna get kind of the best bang for buck. Now, moving on to video editing, looking at the 4K export, you can actually see that they're all pretty much in the same ballpark. You're gonna see at most two minutes and 51 seconds out of the latest i7-12700H and RTX 3080 Ti. And even if you go for the 3070 Ti or the 3060, I cannot see this laptop getting above a three minute export time. So if you're video editing, really any of the models this year will perform very well. Um, for 4K playback, 4K export times. And then as we look at the 6K export time, uh, you can see that the winner for the 6K export time is actually the i7-12700H and RTX 3080 Ti. Surprise, surprise. Um, so the 6K export time is definitely the best with that you know, powerful GPU. Now, lastly, looking at DaVinci Resolve, you can see that the best export time was the i7-12700H and RTX 3080 Ti at six minutes and 12 seconds. Pretty good export time, nothing amazing. I'm never really over impressed with DaVinci Resolve export times. They have very good playback because uh, the GPU is heavily utilized for playback inside of DaVinci Resolve. But the export times tend to be a little slower on most laptops compared to Premiere Pro with that same nine minute 4K clip inside of the timeline. Now, punch for punch, if it was me personally, I would either go with last year's Ryzen 9 5900HX model if I'm looking for good battery life and I would get that model with 32 gigs of RAM which will improve the Photoshop scores and the Premiere Pro playback overall. So you can save a little bit of money by going with last year's model but upgrade that RAM to 32 gigs to get you better performance in app. Now if I'm looking for the best overall performance I'm going to go for the i7-12700H and RTX 3070 Ti. I really think the 3070 Ti is enough but if you want to future proof yourself then you could go for the 30 
380 Ti. For me, that just would be just a little overkill. I don't need that much performance, and it would save me probably about four to $500, which I could use maybe half of that for a RAM upgrade. So tomato, tomato, definitely want to make the pick that's right for you. Now, if you are using SolidWorks, absolutely, without a doubt, an RTX A3000 or A5000 is the way to go. Well, links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't want to miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.